So how are we going to get to 500 and L? Well, we're going to win 50 buy-ins at 200, take a 10 buy-in shot, then win 50 buy-ins at 500, and then hopefully move on to 1K and L. This week was pretty good in terms of results. However, I'm not really happy with my volume. Uh, definitely weren't hitting the hours I want to hit this week. Definitely can attribute most of that to the World Cup being on at outrageous times for Australians, usually in between 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. So I've been going to bed quite late and waking up late. So um, that's been a bit of a distraction. However, hopefully I'm going to get my volume back on track next week and return to my normal sleeping pattern. This hand here is, we've got six, seven of spades, uh, three bet, pretty good board for our range, I bet. Decided to barrel off on spade turns. Obviously a 10, a queen, I probably won't bluff on. Uh, deuce is pretty good, doesn't really change much. Does give me the backdoor flush draw. Um, definitely will go with it here. I will be tripling off with my queen 10 suited, aces, ace, king, jacks, and kings. So there's quite a few value hands here. I don't have that many bluffs. I'd probably have to turn like deuces to sixes into a triple here to have enough equal bluffs. Uh, the seven is not good enough for showdown. Definitely have to jam here still. And we get called off pretty light. Sam, we have ace, ten of hearts. Getting a pretty good three bet price. Definitely think villain should be going a little bit bigger. Not that it makes that much of a difference. Flop pretty well here. Ace, ten, five. Um... When Villain uses like non-standard 3-bet size, I mean it could have been a misclick, who knows. I'm just going to play exploitatively here and play an unbalanced range. Raise the flop. I mean, I'm going to have some straight flush draws, I guess. And unfortunately we get coolered um, in a pretty disgusting manner. This time we have the aces, we squeeze. Um, I think SP is going to fold here at high frequency if player 4 folds. So I'm kind of hoping player 4 makes a move here. We get the last second flat, which is good. However, this board is not amazing. Uh, we do have an overpair, so it's still okay. I'm uh, going to make this into a two-streak game. Definitely would uh, bet bet with my hard heart and backdoor spades on turn spades. So, seems like a pretty good spot to turn this into a two-streak game against Villain. Um, I think I'm going to get stacked here more often um, by better hands, but... I unblock the heart ace, which I think is important. So I decided to just rip it here and hopefully have like, they have like a queen X of hearts that calls off. This time we have ace king, four betting against a button, pretty standard. Button is going to be three betting wider than all the other positions. Um, probably just going to stack off once we've got 56 in. Pretty good flop, top pair with a backdoor flush draw. Um, you know, I don't expect to get... I mean, I'm going to stack ace-queen, or I'm going to get sacked by ace-jack, or I'm going to chop with ace-king. Turn four all clubs. I guess I have some bluffs, like king-queen with a club. I jam. Probably could size down, but it is what it is. And we get caught off pretty light. Next hand, we have ace-four of diamonds. We are a little bit deeper. And we get flattered by player one. Flop the dream. We have the nut flush draw with top pair. With this much equity, I decided to just bet. Um, I do think in a screen name game, you want to be checking some of your nut flush draws on this flop just to balance. And here, I'm just going to bet, bet, bet. Um, and I think player one's going to bluff that often. So I'd rather just stack like ace king. On this river, I would probably just jam my ace king as well. So villain probably has to call off his sets. And obviously with flushes, they would be quite happy. Um, I jam... Not expecting to get called, to be honest, on this river. However, they do manage to find a call with a set, which I think is pretty standard. On the next hand, we have ace-jack of clubs. We three-bet, and we get flattered. I decided to, uh, decided to bet this combo. Uh, I, just, I don't mind checking with the backdoor flush. So, But this time I bet. Um, turn is an ace. Obviously, now it gives us two pair. Um, we have a multitude of bluffs on turn, and I think Villain understands this, hence why they probably jam the ace-king. I think jamming with the king of spades is pretty bad. That removes a lot of my bluffing range. So maybe without the king of spades, this jam is fine. And tonight, equity, and we hold. This time we have ace-king in a squeeze spot. Um, I mean, this is pretty strong when we squeeze under the gun. 
MP, I mean, some players have a back raising range here, um, so I am pretty worried if player 3 back raises. However, they just flat. Uh, I decided to check here. Um, I'm not sure why, but I think it's okay to check some of these combos. Maybe if I had an Ace of Diamonds, it'd be better to check. Anyway, turn 7, doesn't really change much. I've under my hand, so I'm probably going to have to call call here a lot. Small size. Easy call on turn, and probably calling off on most rivers. River is a diamond, uh, probably not the best river to call on off on, but I did underwrap my hand. My only other stronger hands are really ace-queen, so I'm pretty high up, and I just call it off, and we save a lot of money against king-queen. This time we have kings, and I 3-bet against a deeper opponent. I think we're about 170 big, something around that region. And we get flattered. Um, pretty good flop for our hand. We should be C betting here, high frequency. And so I want to bet with my kings. I'm going to get called here by a multitude of pairs and maybe even some backdoor floats. And player six does call. Turn is a jack of diamonds. Uh, sometimes you want to bet, sometimes you don't. I decided to check this back um, because we are a little bit deeper. If this was 100 bigs, yeah, I'm just going to triple off. River is a 7 of diamonds, 5-6 is the only draw that gets here, I'm never folding this river with the diamond in my hand, um, so pretty easy call, and we actually avoid losing a big pot against the set. Queens in this next hand, I 3-bet the MP open from cutoff, we get cold called by player 4 and 5, and player 2 obviously has to complete, pretty good flop for Queens. I will play this hand a little bit conservative against the deeper stacks just because we're four ways and me betting into four is perceived to be very strong, i.e. over pairs. So they can play pretty well against my range. Player four folds, which is probably the best outcome. I get to play this hand in position now. And if player five jams, which they essentially do, I'm obviously not folding. Stack sizes are too shallow. I'm now worried about player two. If player two like comes over the top or cold calls, I will probably just give the hand up. I mean, they shouldn't be overcalling here too often. Get it in with queens. And of course, we get shown top set. I don't understand why they don't get that in pre, but it is what it is. Next time we have sevens. Uh, we go three ways. Uh, playing against a little bit of a deeper stack on the button. Flopper set. I think I definitely want to see myself just triple here instead of checking. We go for the check raise, but we are relatively deep against player 5, so they can realize a lot of equity with their straights and flushes, and we're going to have to play a big pot out of position. So I definitely like to see myself bet the flop. Uh, we do now have a pretty good value raise here once player 6 calls. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of bad turns. Visibility is low on turn. I mean, like, is a 10 bad? Is a 5 bad? Obviously, hard is bad, but are those cards bad? We turn the not best turn card. That is literally the best card for me to continue on. I'm going to bet, and if we get stacked by 9s, we get stacked by 9s. But there's probably a high probability that we stack 4s. And they still can have heart, heart, and some backdoor diamonds. Uh, Villa now jams, so at this point I thought it was set over set, who's going to win? No, they show us 10-4, and they get there on the river. I wouldn't be able to finish the highlights on that hand. Obviously, I have to show myself luck boxing and coolering someone huge. Here we have 10s, 200 bigs deep, 3 bet pot, I bet the flop, deny some equity with my 10s. We are a little bit deeper, so I'll probably check most of turns and play it as a check call on turn and river. However, I just bink the 10 on turn. I'm going to continue here. They can still have some flush draws, obviously lower sets, and they can still have jacks, queens, kings, and aces, potentially. Uh, so I bet here, and probably going to jam on every non-club river. Jack is not the best uh, best river. You know, some 8-7s get there, some king, queen of clubs, but there's not enough of them. And yes, obviously they have jacks, but we can stack sets, and we call it nines.
Okay, so first hand we're going to look at is the ace king here. We have it on the cutoff. We three bet under the gun, pretty standard, and get cold four bet by small blind. Uh, this is an extremely strong range. Um, I don't think there are many people bluffing in this pool as a four bet bluff. Um, so uh, this is a kind of a marginal call in position. I'm really just hoping that this is a reg that's four betting tens, jacks, maybe nines, queens. And then maybe having some like some bluffs like ace jack suited, ace queen suited, and maybe some of the ace threes to ace five. But I think that's pretty ambitious. Uh, I think they're less incentivized to four bet once I three bet under the gun. But I do defend because I have ace king, and I am just hoping they have tens to queens, and that I just realize my forty something percent equity against. Uh, flop is king nine five rainbow. Pretty good flop for our hand. Obviously, we have top pair top kicker. Now, small blind decides to check. I mean, this is kind of weird. It's either going to be top set, queens, jacks, tens, and maybe some uh, king, queen, if they have that in range. I mean, I think that's a little bit ambitious to put in, but let's let's say king, queen. Uh, so really against that range, I have no incentive to bluff. I mean, they have really just two outs. I'm not really de trying to deny equity. And I kind of want to underwrap my range here because, well, it is a lot weaker than villain's range. I check back. Turn is a jack, so one of the primary checking hands has now just turned a set. Um, and villain does bet reasonably small. Obviously have to call here. I'm not super thrilled about the spot, uh, as I mentioned. Um, so now, I mean, is Queens really going to bet the turn potentially small for value? Uh, for, sorry, deny, equity denial, but against what am I, are they really denying equity against? Obviously have to call though. And River is kind of disgusting spot. Villain jams. And, I mean, I think aces would bet flop and turn. So, I can rule out aces. It's either going to be kings or jacks. I mean, what kind of bluffs do they have? Ace, queen of spades. But I think ace, queen of spades would just bet the flop. So, this is kind of disgusting. I think in hindsight, I'd like a fold here. Um, just because, you know, this is just... Like, what bluffs does villain have? Um, I guess maybe they could have ace, king. So, like, kind of, that's what I was kind of hoping. And uh, maybe sometimes they spaz out, but I doubt it. I click call and we do get shown the top set. Okay, so here we have ace king and we three bet from big blind versus button open. Pretty standard. We get flooded and we take a flop of ace six nine. Uh, I decided to size down a bit. I probably should go for a bit half pot on this type of board. Uh, lots of continues from villain's range. So I definitely think we should be betting bigger. Anyway, we get called. Turn is a jack, not an amazing turn card. Probably have more jacks in range than I do. Can also have jack nine suited. Um, and obviously the primary uh, hand that I'm worried about is ace jack. Um, but then again, there are still a lot of ace x that we are beating that I will want to get value from. Plus there's quite a few draws out there which have not uh, been completed yet. So I do bet just under, just around, just over half pot and villain flats now at this point when they flat i'm pretty happy that ace king is the best hand uh generally i think population is going to be jamming turn with their stronger hands um so i mean if i bet and i get jammed here i, I mean yeah i mean it's close i mean with ace king we probably have to call off but um we get flatted here so i'm now putting villain on you know weak ace x Pair plus draw, so, you know, 6x of hearts, jack x of hearts, um, you know, still 7, 8, queen 10. Those sort of hands will continue. And the river is a 7, only completes 10, 8 of hearts. And I guess we can say 6, 7 of hearts is the only other hand that really gets, um, improves on this river. Uh, now, theoretically, this is definitely a check, and we probably call uh, a lot of the time, <clears throat> depending on villain's tendencies. However, um, I decided to jam here. I just don't see enough uh, bluffs on river. Plus, there's still like ace, queen, ace, ten that can call. Um, like I said on the turn, because they didn't jam me on the turn, I think my ace king is going to be a good. Uh, it's going to be good a lot. Yes, we are going to get owned by a7 and 6-7. Not that many combos of. There's only really <clears throat> one combo of 6-7 of hearts and two combos of 
sorry, one combo of A7 suited. So there's not that many combos that I'm worried about, and I jam, and we get called off by tens.